Five, four, three, two, one, move. Good day, guys. Thanks for joining us. We are here, Trigger Grills, at Barbecue Pit Stop in Layton, Utah. Great store right outside of uh, Salt Lake City. And we're excited. We're here today to announce a promotion we don't do very often. For Father's Day, starting today through June 18th, you're going to be able to get $100 off of Pro Series Grills. It can be the Pro 34 or the Pro 22. And hey, maybe you need something a little smaller or you're looking to add that second trader to the family. You've got our tailgating model and our Bronson 20, both going to be available. Those are going to be $50 off during this time period. We've got a lot of participating dealers. You can go to TraderGrills.com backslash dealers, find one close to you, just like here at Barbecue Pit Stop, and come on in and check them out. We're not only going to talk about the deals today, we're going to talk about some great steaks. We're going to go outside here in a minute with Anella Kelso from Steak River Farms to talk about their great steaks and show you how to be the hero this Father's Day. A couple of things I want to talk about on the Pro Series that makes it such a great grill. Um, first, you've got the Pro Controller right here. Um, a, lot, a lot tighter constraints on this controller. Also, you've got the two meat probes. So you can go right through this grommet here, and you can be monitoring two meat temperatures right here from the controller. You've also got the 18-pound hopper with the clean-out. This is a great, reliable grill. It will make Dad happy, believe me. Something else will make Dad happy, well-cooked red meat. Come on outside, let's show you what we're doing. You'll see here, Barbecue Pit Stop's got a great assortment of items. They've got the bear claws with those really hot pork butts. They've got plenty of thermometers to kind of keep up with what your cook's doing. Gloves, always well needed. And here outside, Mr. Bella, how are you? This is Anella Kelso from Snake River Farms. Anella, how are you today? Fantastic. So, appreciate you coming out. We are cooking some beautiful Snake River Farms steaks today. The best there are. So, give us a little bit of background about Snake River Farms. So, Snake River Farms is a Watching, would you kind of just talk to that a little bit? So Kobe is a region in Japan. So right. you don't actually get, like the Kobe beef, it's, it's very much like if you're buying champagne or sparkling wine. If, if it's not from the champagne area of France, it's not champagne. Similar to if it's not from Kobe region of Japan, it's not Kobe beef. What we did was we took the Kobe genetics, the Japanese Wagyu genetics. So Wagyu is the, the breed, Kobe is the region. We took those and we crossbred them with, you know, continental American breeds. Um, Angus, Charlay, you know, really delicious American beef to give you that much more, it's just a buttery, rich, beefy flavor. Right. I think a lot of people that haven't been to Japan or experienced, like, true Kobe beef, it's going to be a bit of overkill. So, by, you know, by, by being almost too rich, and obviously the cost, too, by taking it and working it with some of our domestic cattle, it makes a lot of sense. It's, well, and it just gives you, it gives you the ability to, if you're going to eat an actual real, you know, 100% Kobe steak, it's, you're not going to eat a steak. You're not right. going gonna to have, you know, maybe an ounce, maybe two ounces. Right. Whereas we're kind of, you know, giving you a product that you can sit down and eat, uh, you know, 12 or 16. I have a pretty ounce of steak. <laughs> <laughs> You've got all kinds we, of options, We've right? got all kinds of options. I think I may or may <laughs> not have uh, indulged in a three-pound tomahawk back is, in the day. There is, a, there is a three-pound tomahawk So you can't outfit. go to that so, route, too. Yes. <laughs> that was over multiple uh, meals there. Hey, well, you know, that leftover tomahawk. We don't judge. Yeah, we don't oh judge. man, we don't judge. Well, let's train spots here real quick. Okay. I'm gonna give these people a sneak peek into what we're working on already. So today we're gonna talk reverse sear when it comes to steaks, and we're working on the reverse side right now. We've got our T-bones up there, got our fillets there, got our New York strips there. We're gonna talk to each of them um, directly here in a second. 
Uh, let me take a quick, guys, ask all the questions you want today. We're here for you. We want to make your Father's Day great. You know, you're going to make it great by participating in the, the deal we've got going on with the $100 off Pro Series. But we also want you to turn out a great steak for Dad and the family. Uh, do we have any questions yet? Nothing so far. Nothing so far. All right, we're going to keep going. Feel free to get the questions in. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was these three types of steaks we have in Ella. We just showed them the T-bone. Let's start with it. Where does that come from off the animal? And, and, and what are they looking at their attribute-wise when they buy a T-bone? So the T-bone, I always tease that the T-bone is one of my favorite steaks because it's two steaks in one. It comes from the short loin, and the T-bone is cut more toward the rear of the loin that has, um, has you're going to get two steaks. Yep. You're going to get your porterhouse and you're going to get your T-bone. Porterhouse comes more from the rear. It's going to have more of that tender loin in there. It's going to have a bigger tender loin on that spot. Your T-bone is kind of that perfect mixture of your You know, you always say it's two steaks. For, I mean, I would like to say it's two steaks in one. You're going to share it, but you don't have to share it. You can, you can definitely just have it all for yourself. But So that's your T-bone. And then the other two steaks that we're doing, we have the strip loin, which yep. is the one side of the T-bone. Yep. And then we're also going to do the filet mignon or the tender. It's tough to beat. It's, there's, there's not many that. <laughs> so when we are looking at, you know, when we're talking about the snicker farms and the way we a lot of people, it comes down to grading talking about, you know, what do people see in their in their usual counter, um, you know, at the grocery store, what do they see at butcher shops, what does Snake River provide? Can you talk a little bit about the USDA scale? So, the USDA scale, um, generally anything that you're going to see in the grocery stores, you're going to be seeing um, select choice and prime. And we, with the Japanese um, and American, the Wagyu, American Wagyu, we go one step further. So the Japanese grading scale goes from a 1 to a 12. And in comparison, when you're looking at a prime, is a 4. On okay. that scale. So we look at everything that's under the Snake River Farms line is above prime. So our black grade falls between a 5 and a 9 on that scale, and our gold grade falls between a 9 and a 12. And the higher the number, the more the marbling. And it's not that, it's the more the fat. It's not that outside fat that you're going to see that right. covers. Intermuscular. You know, yeah, it's the intermuscular fat that's going to break down, and it's like little beautiful cavities to butter. That's flavor. It's, it's delicious. I mean, yeah. Fat is flavor, and you look at the you know you look at the differences in something that you're going to trim a lot of fat off of versus something that all the fat's just inside, yep. and it, it cooks out and it just it provides that beautiful rich buttery flavor and taste that you want to have over and over. Again. Absolutely. When we're doing our trigger shop classes, I always tell people it's pretty basic. Select is when Dollar General runs those bacon wrapped uh, steaks for like two bucks. Yeah. It's probably going to be your select grade. Choice is what you find in. 95% of your grocery stores, Prime you find in some of your butcher shops, and then obviously, if you're going to that eight scale American way you gotta go to Snake River Farms. Yeah, and it's, I mean, and it's really nice to see that, you know, there are more artisan butcher shops. There are yeah. more people that are, that are carrying really high grade But when you look at the difference of just going into the grocery store and saying, well, why am I paying this for this and this? Why is this so much different? It's it's with anything that you're, the, the quality is there. Right. And um, we had talked about how much feed those cattle a long time. Yeah, that, that was a huge thing to me when I was fortunate enough to go out to the Double R Ranch, uh, where you guys raise a lot of your Wayu cattle, and talk to Kent, the rancher out there. The amount of time that American Wayu Snake River Farm steers are on cattle, share that with the people, because it was amazing to me. So there's the folklore around Kobe beef, and the massages, and the beef, drinking beer, and the sausages, <laughs> and the sake. We don't feed sake, we don't massage the cattle, but um, where, where it makes the difference is and uh, Japanese cattle, Kobe beef, are fed on about three times more yeah. schedule than, than your regular cattle. So the steaks that you're going to go to any grocery store and eat, you know, those cattle are probably going to eat for about 100 days. Um, whereas anything in the Snake River Farms program is probably about closer to 500. Yeah. And, and honestly, I mean, I think when you just look at that, I mean, no one's giving you guys free feed, right? You're still buying it. Turns out we still have to feed Oh, them. man. I, I, we, anybody we out there handing out we free still, feed? We still have to feed them. Uh, let let Anel and them know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I did think that was another cool thing I learned at the ranch was just what you guys, without going into too much detail, I think for me and you that are geeks about it, the genetics and the feed programs you guys have is just something that the second to none. It was really unique to learn. Just the tip of the iceberg about that stuff. We're truly a, you know, we're truly a family operation. We're pasture play company. We, um, you know, I always joke that like we have cowboys. Yeah. And like that's really a job title in our in our yeah. company. Is you know, we have cowboys, we have cowgirls, we have the ranchers. We have and we are really 
probably this we take the care. Yeah. You know, the, the, the feed that goes the, that goes to the cattle and just the processing and everything that we do is from start to finish. And you guys have such family. control of those processes, yes. which is great. Yeah. Yeah. No, We're involved I, in every step of it. Yep. So let's go back to the cuts for just a second. Yeah. Um and when I'm looking at you know, somebody's in there trying to make a decision on what to buy, and let's say they they want something that's a little bit firmer, or something you know, as far as the grain goes. What would you recommend? Like, if somebody's looking for a fillet, what's that flavor profile, or that mouth feel looking like? So people with fillet mignon, the, the tenderloin, yep. you know, it is by far considered to be probably the most tender of all the things that you can put in there. It doesn't confuse a whole lot. It's, it's not overly spicy. It's it's got that mouthfeel that's just, it's the butter. Like when you, when you go to the high-end steakhouses, when you, I mean, everybody wants the filet mignon. Everybody's birthday steak. Everybody's birthday steak. Um, well, not my birthday steak. No, nah, mine either. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but it, it, it does, it has that really, it's it's really, um, neutral's not the word, but it kind of just has that, it's that, that nice, soft beef. And it's kind of a blank canvas. You kind of go where you want with yeah. it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a perfect steak for, I'm a, I'm a salt pepper girl on everything. Um, but, you know, tenderloins really can lend themselves to, like, taking on other, like, that's why you see them with sausage, you see them with lace, you see them with different applications, yeah. because it's, they're so good. I mean, I'm not a sauce, you're not, are you a sauce person on? I'm not, I'm salt pepper meat. Uh, and it's sometimes on, like, a compound butter, just a little, a little, a little butter, I mean, a little that, tallow. But that might help my company. I just wasn't listening to that. And that's, that, that beef tallow you guys got. I don't want to talk about that. The way to go. And then, so the same for New York Strip. How would you kind of, how would you describe that to the viewers? New York is like a steak steak. I mean, that's like when you think of the New York Strip or the Strip steak or that, that's like that. Apart from, you know, the ribeyes, I mean, the, the Strip is like that. It's kind of that perfect combination between it's not so fatty, it's not so um, overwhelming, yep. but it's not as soft and tender. And you know, mast is the is the is the tenderloin. It really just has that I'm eating a steak. Right. Flavor. No, I get it. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. Everybody always says, you know, what's the how do you explain it? What do you do? And I'm like, you just gotta eat it. Like that's you just gotta eat it. That's, no. the, that's the best way to go. Nothing wrong with that. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna have got a couple of steaks ready to go. Um, real quick, do we have any questions? Well, we wanna know uh, what seasoning you're using. We are getting there right now. So we will do the seasonings here in a second. Once again, while I'm getting ready, guys, remember you can go over there to Traeger Grills uh, backslash dealers. Find your local dealer. Go in. Um, take advantage of this offer. If we do not do it often. $100 off Pro Series Grills. $50 off the Bronson 20 and the Tailgater 20. Also, uh, when you go in there and you buy Dad's Grill, take a picture in the store with a Traeger. Hashtag Traeger sent me. You're going to buy Dad a grill? Shoot, you may get lucky and you may win a grill. So we're going to be giving one of those away for Traeger Semi. We'll go back here to the trusty Yeti and get some steaks. We're giving away, we're giving away a Traeger for Father's Day, too. Yes, There's you guys are. Steaks. So you guys can visit snakeriverfarms.com as well. We um, are doing a Traeger 22 for Father's Day this year. Uh, the steaks that we are cooking today are all the steaks that we are featuring for our Father's Day specials. Um, the T-bone is kind of, you know, the T-bone, the tomahawks, the, we got a lot. Today we're doing the T-bone, the New York, and the filet. And it's our goal this year to make Dad the king of steaks. He should be. All right, so we're using our prime rib rub here on this T-bone. And I'm just going to take, I'm going to season it down real nice on the top. And you'll notice I'm a little bit heavy there, that's fine. So I got this little trick I'm going to do here. I'm going to knock it down like that, and then I'm going to use that excess to season my side. Because you always want that, you know, everybody's Instagramming these days, and nothing looks worse than a steak on a Traeger, and all you see is white fat. you got to have a little bit of color on there. Plus, that's going to give you all kinds of flavor. I'm going to go back over here to the other side. Here's your example of your marbling. Yes, yeah, let's look like, at that. I mean, if you guys can see that, when we talk about, like, the intermuscular marbling, that's this is the New York strip side. This is your tenderloin side of your T-bone, and that's you don't you don't get that. I think you, I think you want that one too. That's got a good little piece I, of tenderloin on like, it. I'm telling you, two two two. She's things gonna end up convert me. I wasn't a T-bone guy. He wasn't but... a T-bone guy. Today we're, we're we're the conversion is happening. All right. Once again, just gonna get some real good seasoning on top here. Pat that down. 
get our other side in there, get the back side, and get this other side too. Awesome. I'll lay that one right there, and we're going to move on to the New York Strip. New York Strip, we're going to use the beef shake. Thank you, ma'am. A uh, couple things I like about these, the prime rib rub is one of my favorite rubs that we carry. It goes really good on beef. It's got a lot of flavor going on in there, good salt, good pepper. This is down to more of your typical, what I would call steak rub. You've got a little bit of lemon in there, salt, pepper, garlic, onion. Beef shake is definitely a good one when it comes to just getting down there and getting some flavor on it. So once again, we're going to get in here. Any of you guys that have been to the classes, Traeger shop class classes, no I'm not a rub it in the meat kind of guy, just like to season it, season it up real nice there, and then we'll hit this back side. Once again a little dusted, and there goes two. And now, because this is such a blank canvas, as Anella said with the play, <laughs> We're going to hit it with a combo of beef and prime rib, which I've already made. Don't look for it in the storage. You're going to have to buy one of each and put it together yourself. And this one, I'm always, you know, you want to give it flavor, but you don't want to over-season it because it has a smaller portion. Yep. those sit right here. I like to give them 5-10 minutes of room temp. Um, you notice there, we didn't put any binders on the meat. Uh, no olive oil, no mustard, nothing like that. Uh, what I find is let them sit at room temp. A little hotter than room temp out here so it won't go as long. Um, it kind of just lets that rub work in like a little bit of a slurry into the meat. Speaking of that, let's check on these over here. These have been going on at, at, at 180 for about an hour. <coughs> They're sitting around 100 degrees, 98, 97. Check out the strips here, 102, 103. What I'm looking for here is about 110 to 115, actually about 115 to 120. I'm going to reverse sear them. We're not going to reverse sear all these, just a couple. But once again, having this good instant read thermometer is great. Because it allows us to get in here, check where the meat's at, and it's very key to cooking a great steak. A lot of people do the whole thumb test, and I still like to let my trusty thermometer tell me where to be. So we've got one trigger set up here. Because we're cooking so many great steaks for the great folks out here today. We got this one set up on smoke. We got that one set up on sear. So we'll just go from here to there. Here in a couple of minutes. So like I said, 180 for about 75 minutes. I find it puts me around 115, 120. Then over here on high on the Pro 34. Seared for two minutes each side. It's going to come out about 135, medium rare. Which is exactly how I like my steak. If you want to go a little bit higher, a medium, a medium well, I like to just extend my smoke time. I don't like to do a four, five, six minute sear because I don't want to take a chance of over caramelizing that outside, getting the burnt flavor on such a great piece of meat. Any questions, Jack? Meredith says I can't get a good bark on my meat when I smoke it. Any advice? Um, good bark on the meat. So, one, it depends on really what temperature you're at. So, Grant. I would say um, maybe if you go to a lower temperature, you can also try spritzing, apple juice, white grape juice. That puts more moisture on the outside, and as that moisture evaporates, it creates bark. So try those out. Any other questions? I uh, can't wait to see what that sear looks like. Sear looks like. What is the temp on the sear on the trigger right now? Trigger right now is around. 385, probably around 400. I've got the cast iron grates in there. So the cast iron grates have been storing 
all this amazing heat for the 75 minutes that we've been uh, smoking over here. So that'll be that'll be good. To, you know, that'll be good because it's going to give us that sear as soon as we put it on there. Anything else? All right. So we'll make sure I got everything covered here. So we'll talk through the seasonings. We're good. We're going to sear off here. We'll go ahead and do that. Now. Got a couple of other clothes. Woo, yeah. So. I like using our little pigtail here. I'm not a big. What I don't like about using tongs are great for ribs, spatches are great for uh, hamburgers, those kind of things. I like the pigtail for steak, just because I can find like that little piece of fat right there and just whip it on out. So right here, I'm going to take this, throw it over there. Let me grab one of these blades. Put it right there. Then let's get this strip. Throw it right there. We're gonna let those sear two minutes each side. Once again, we're doing this on the Pro 34. We got three of them here for you to look at. We've also got the Pro 22. We've got the deal going on, 100% off those at all participating dealers. TraegerGrills.com backslash dealers. 100% $100 off. Oh my gosh, thank you. $100 You're off. You're going to make some really happy dads. Well, no, strike that. It's a live event. <laughs> Time to make an air. I'm 100% looking forward to these steaks. Look up. Not 100%. $100 off. $100, $100 off the grill. $100 off the Pro 34, Pro 22, and then $50 off the Bronson 20, the Tailgater 20. I mean, he's the best guy in your life. You've got to take care of him. You've got to take care of him. You've got to take care of him. dealers all over the country. They go to TriggerGirls.com slash dealers. Easy enough. And then you guys want the steaks. You just go to SnakeRiverFarms.com pick up the steaks. Yeah, how quick can I get them? Uh, we can. We ship from Kansas City and we ship across the country the longest it takes is three days. Perfect. Um, so it's $9.99 flat rate shipping. And it's we were talking earlier, um, I can't remember who I was talking to, but we were talking about how, you know, she wanted to, they, they wanted to go out for um, their birthday or anniversary, and what steakhouse do you want to go to? And um, your husband said that, let's just get a steak from St. Louis Farms and do it on the trigger. And I was like, that's, I mean, it really is that special occasion. Yeah, really absolutely. That. You're going you're gonna to load the whole family up, and you're going to go to a steakhouse, and I'm all about steakhouses, I love steakhouses. But this gives you guys the opportunity to really like Frozen, you put them in your freezer, they can chill. It's kind of that gift that you can have all summer long. Yeah, and you guys, have, right, and you guys have some pretty good, but I would consider the volume deal where you're not having to buy a case, you can buy six and you're going to get a little bit of a price break. We, sell, we don't sell by the pound, we sell by the piece. Yep. And so um, so you can buy one tenderloin and one T bone and one tomahawk or you know whatever your, whatever your choice, whatever your favorite is. And, and another thing I want to clarify too is when I pulled these steaks out, guys, I didn't take a knife to them at all. No. Literally, they were out of the package, ready to go. So, what you're paying for, you're getting 100% yieldable product. Very much. So. Besides all that little tenderness that's going to fall out as we cook it, but that is flavor. It is. It is we'll absolutely. All right. If there's any questions out there, let us know. Share with your friends on Facebook what we've got going on here. I'm going to check on these steaks real quick. See if they're ready for the flip. in there to make your knuckles sing a little bit. All right, so we're going to flip these. All right, let's give them a couple more minutes, and then we're going to pull these things off and slice them. Um, once again, that deal's running today through June 18th, so you've got 10 days. Go in and make your purchase. Once again, TriggerGrills.com backslash or slash dealers to check that out. Um, another once again, Snake River Farms. You guys are 
So it'll probably need to be ordered by what? When? Tuesday, Wednesday? By Tuesday is kind of your best. To be day. safe? To be anywhere in the country by Tuesday, yeah. We can reach the coastal areas. Awesome. No. Get on a Tuesday, you get on a Friday. That's great. Um, you know, while we're waiting for these to finish, a couple of the other steaks you guys offer. The ribeye, that's my favorite. We have ribeye. We have my favorite, which is the cap of ribeye. Um, so tell, tell people about that. The cap of ribeye is, if you've ever looked at a prime rib and you've had a piece of prime rib, you've got this cap of ribeye. The prime rib, you've got the eye of the mm -hmm. ribeye, and then there's this piece of fat, and then there's this beautiful piece of meat that lays right on top, and it's called the spinel store side. And it is the most amazing piece of meat on the cap. In my personal opinion, I'm not going to deny anyone their favorites, but yeah, it's, it's my favorite. We've got that, we've got your traditional ribeyes and flat iron. We've got a whole line of pork products as well. So, anything. that flat iron steak. Talk about that a little bit. I think that's a little bit of an unsung hero. The flat iron is a. Um, it's from the shoulder area. It's a shoulder steak, and it is a little bit. It has a little bit more of the um, the intermuscular marbling in it. So it's it's definitely something that I always like to say takes really well to a wet marinade. Oh yeah. Or something that, or you know, a rub that you're gonna put on it. And you're gonna leave it overnight. Let it really kind of work in. Work in and break down, and then it's you know sliced thin on on salads, on sandwiches, on anything. It is. It's for your money. It's one of the best things you can do. Awesome. What do we got question wise out there? Uh, Justin wants to know what kind of thermometer you're using to check the steak. Yeah, so I have been using this Traeger Instant Read Thermometer. $49.95 at your dealers. <laughs> Works well. It's been doing a good job. It's pretty much showing us it's pretty dang hot out here right now still. Um, but yeah, I've been using that one. Another question. Uh, probably get to this later. They want to know how long to let the meat rest after you take it off to get a medium rare so, before cutting into it. Yeah, so honestly, steak's about five to ten minutes. We're going to forego that today because we're on a bit of a time crunch. But I like to let them sit five or ten minutes. I'll bring them off. I'll put them on a plate. And I like to what I call tent the plate. So I'm going to take some aluminum foil, put it over the top, and leave one side just barely open. Because I'm not wanting it to continue to cook. Uh, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting for all that cellular activity and molecular activity to calm down in the meat so all the juices kind of stabilize so that way when we cut into it all those active juices just don't flow out of the meat onto the cutting board. What kind of internal temperature are you looking for? Um, so on, on medium rare 130, on medium 140, medium well 145. And if you're cooking meat... You want, well you want to make sure that you pull it. You're going to pull before it, that, you're you're gonna gonna, pull it about 10 degrees. I, I usually about 5 to 7 five, okay. for, about, for carryover. It's going to definitely it's Warm gonna up. climb up. Yeah. And, and honestly, if you're cooking medium well, don't cook the steak or the steak. Just take the Buy word, their burgers. Just take the word well out of your <laughs> Exactly. Me, medium. <laughs> it's uh, it, it always breaks my heart to see steaks go medium well. It's I feel bad for that poor animal. It's, I've learned. <laughs> it's, it's taken me a while to learn. But yeah, I'm definitely more of the medium and medium, medium burger. Absolutely. Anything else? Another question. Can you tell us a little bit about the flavors of the rubs you use on each different yes. steak? Yes. So, actually, as we talked about earlier, I just kind of wanted to taste it and tell you what comes right off the top of my mouth. I had salt, pepper. It's got a little bit of lemon in there, which I like, especially with the beef. Some garlic and onion. The prime rib rub, that one I use all the time. It's going to be a little bit more, a little more peppery, yeah, and you got a little more savory in there. That is really made for a prime rib. It's great on a brisket, and that's why I used it on the T-bone. A little bit meatier, a little bit bigger steak. And these sauces are here just so you can buy them for something else. Please do not sauce the steak. <laughs> we try to cook it perfectly so you can just enjoy it as is. But for your ribs, chicken, pork butts, feel free to uh, get sauces. Pulled pork. Definitely little little sauce pork. In there. No. All right, let me get a say. Go ahead. What kind of pellets are you using on these steaks? Pellets. All right, great question. We've got a mix, 50-50 mix of cherry and pecan that we're using right now. Also great on steak. I love the big game blend on steak. I also love the Texas beef blend on steak. Um, really, if you like that heart, you know, that big heavy hearty smoke, also look at Hickory Road. Gave you a lot of options there. Minor cherry and pecan, 50-50. But hey, make it what you like. Any other ones? That's it for now. All right, let's uh. Up. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
You got your strip there, you've got your fillet there, we've got our T-bone there. And now we're gonna give these things a couple of minutes and we're going to uh we're going to close out the taste of these bad boys. Uh, what was that tool you used to take? Oh, pigtail. Yes, we hit on the pigtail a little bit earlier. But I really like the pigtail. This actually is a great Father's Day gift option. We have a tool set that we sell. It's going to be the pigtail, the tongs, and the spatula. I like this. Other grill brands, they put a fork in there. I've been barbecuing for 32 years. Never used a fork. Never used that big old fork. Maybe if there ever been a home invasion, some of that nature, I'd have used it. But I've never used it for anything barbecue and grilling. So we got to talking. What's that third tool we can put in there? It's the pigtail. It's awesome. It's great. As you saw, I can get in there. I can get the steaks. Tongs are great for a lot of other things, but when you put them on that steak, you end up losing some of that rub. We keep 100% rub retention with the pigtail. So I love using that one. Any other questions? The pigtail, that's a lot funner to say than fork, too. David asks, I have a Timberline, or sorry, Will Timberline 850 get better marks? Will it get better grow marks? Yeah. Uh, yes, it will. Um, for two reasons. One, we've got the stainless grate. And two, it gets up 500 degrees and a little bit above 500 times. All right. Any other questions? Anybody here have a question? No? Steve, you got a question? Owner of Barbecue Pit Stop? <laughs> Where do I get those pants, Chad? Oh, man, that's, that's that one gets asked a lot. All the time. <laughs> Loudmouth Golf, man. Loudmouth. They, uh, they make sure I, I keep looking... Fly or ridiculous, however you want to, however you want to put it up. I consider it fly. I like it. Um, Adela, which one would you like to try first? I mean, we should probably cut that too. Had a feeling you were going to go there. <laughs> you put a glove on here, safety first. High vis. We were calling these our high vis food safety gloves earlier. I want people to know we're safe. Exactly. Oh, you don't know? All right, so let's go right down the middle here. Look at that. Nice, beautiful red in the middle. The tank. Center cut. Only the best for you, Nella. You want to try this? Go ahead. Okay. Not worth You know, sorry guys, we're not going to sample steak after this. Oh we're, uh, Keep these for ourselves. This this isn't what you're, if, this, if this isn't what you're getting your dad for Father's Day, then he might cut you out of here. That's what I was thinking. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's good. So that is delicious right there. Look here again. You get that, you get that, the rub comes through really well. Then you get that velvety just melt in your mouth. I'm butter. sure, yeah. You call it the butter knife beef, we're known as the butter knife beef because you would not need that steak knife. Well, you can, you can kind of open the butter. Truth be told, it's not real sharp, so that's yeah, good. Well, then we're good. That's good. Let's get over here on this strip. Take a look, see there, man. Look at there once again. Beautiful medium rear, got a little bit of that fat left there. I learned something during the walkthrough this morning. Nella doesn't like the outside fat on her. I like it really easy. How? I'm that. really spoiled. They learn I'm spoiled. Yeah. I'm going to take a little piece off here. Oh, she's so Give that a try. That, that steak's got more when I chew it. It's got it's more. Got that oh. bite. It's got that. That's why I said when you're eating it, you're like, I'm having a steak. This steak I would agree. No, that, that has a, you know, like I said, I haven't ate a lot of strips. I haven't ate a lot of T-bones. But that's got a sitting around, having a bourbon, yep. and I'm eating steak. This is yep. good. Where's taters at? It, it is. It's that kind of thing. A, I might even skip the I would do. And it doesn't need anything else. You guys saw what we did. Great meat, great rub, great smoke, great sear. 
and it's the end of the game. I mean, it's just perfect. It's done. Any other questions before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, Marty wants to know what's the best model for a computer. Marty, depends. Do you have friends or do you not have friends, Marty? You have friends, Pro 34. Because, you know, even if it's just you and your wife, I'll tell you, as soon as you fire one of these things up, especially if you're the first guy in the neighborhood with a Traeger, your friend count's going to quadruple. You know, the one thing I always hear from people, they have one regret when they buy a Pro 22. They wish they would have bought a Pro 34. Um, so it's up to you. I mean, it all depends on how many people you're cooking for. But right now with $100 off, I'd say go ahead and go with the Pro 34. If it's just you and your wife all the time and you have no kids, you kind of don't live in a neighborhood where you have a lot of friends, a 22 will get you by, but i got to recommend that Pro 34. Someone's wondering if there's any way to win a grill right now. Oh, Traeger sent me. So, so let's say you go in, you go to TraegerGrills.com, backslash dealers. When you check that out, you're going to go into your dealer. You're going to take a little picture with a Traeger. Put it on Instagram. Put it on tra Twitter. Put it on uh, Facebook. Hashtag Traeger sent me. And so after the end of the Father's Day promotion, someone is going to win a Pro 34. Pro 34? Pro 34. Yeah. Yeah, and, and oh, you got to pick that up. I'll tell you, it really doesn't, but I just have a feeling like the Traeger God's looking down. If you bought that a grill, your Traeger sent me is going to get out so much more of a chance. So we'll just see what happens. But yes, while you're in there buying dad a grill, if granny. You're, if you're a dad, feel free to buy one for yourself. Or how about granddad? I feel like, you know, my brother's got little kids, and they're probably not going to go buy a Traeger. Right. Like, he should go buy himself a Traeger. No, aunt. No. On behalf of his kids. No, sister and Nella should go buy him a Traeger. Sister and Nella will cook for him. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? This one's for Nella, actually. Oh. Uh, David wants to know if Snake River Farms has Wagyu briskets. Oh, do they? Snake River Farms sells the winning as brisket in barbecue. So, um, we've been in the barbecue, competitive barbecue arena for quite some time now, yeah. and I know Chad's competed with our product, um, with every major national yep. world championship that's ever been won has been won with the Sacred Republic. So, no, yes, the, the yeah. answer is yes. And you can fit like three of them. Yeah, you can fit three of them on a Pro 34. You can fit three of them on a Pro I do it all the time in events. And I always tell people, it's just as easy to cook three as it is cook one. Right, so absolutely. That's where you just got to get, you a, good, so nice get you a good vacuum saver yeah. and you got brisket for there days. And I will tell you, you guys have the black and the gold option on brisket yeah, too, right? Gold. Yep. So going back to that, a give people the five, five to nine or nine to twelve is the difference there. So prime would be like at a four. Yep. Everything that we do is above prime. Um, our black grade is falls between a five and a nine, and our gold yep. grade falls between a nine and a twelve. The higher number, the higher the improvement. Mm. Which probably means the bigger the championship chain. I I think there's a lot of trophies. Yeah, <laughs> there are. There's a lot of trophies. Any, any more questions, guys? We got a couple more minutes here. I mean, if you don't ask questions, I'm just gonna have to sit here and eat steak and make you, you guys watch. See, so we can either answer questions or just eat steak. Um, so through, can you walk us through the reverse sear one more time? Yeah, let's walk through it again. How do we get from here to here? So, beautiful steak roof orange product. We got the T-bone, the New York strip, the uh, tenderloin filet. Rub down here. You've got just your prime rib seasoning. Here, you've got just your beef shake. And here, you've got a combination of prime rib beef shake 50-50. Put your rub on, let it sit for about five to 10 minutes at room temp. You're gonna throw it on your Traeger. Two options here, 180 degrees for 75 minutes, or if you're pressed on time, 225 degrees for 45 minutes. Shoot for an internal temperature of about 115, 120. Once you get that, you're gonna take, you've got two Traegers you can, if not, you're gonna pull the stakes off, crank your Traeger all the way up to high, once it hits high, give it about five minutes, and then you're going to throw that steak on there and sear it. Two minutes each side. Medium rare, you're looking for 135. Medium, 140. Well done, 145. Pull it off. Put it on a plate. Tin it with foil. Have one end open. Let it rest five to ten minutes. Then pull it out and slice it like Anella's doing right now. And enjoy it. That's the reverse sear. And, and let's go through why reverse sear. I was going to say, we get asked a lot, like, if you're not searing to start with, you're not locking in the juices yep. and the flavor, and not true. I always say, two people that set back the barbecue and grilling world at least 30 years. The person that said searing juices, and the person that said cook brisket fat side up. And 
I've already addressed the fat side up guy in some Shaker videos. You can go back to that on their Facebook page. Reverse sear. The reason I like reverse sear, they didn't invent it. I'm just going to use the way it's done. Think about it. When you go and sear in the juices at the beginning, you're taking this really cold steak. It's been sitting in the fridge. You season it up. You throw it on this ridiculously hot. Because the guy that says searing the juices is like, it's seared at 900 degrees. When you throw a, let's call it 45 degree piece of meat, on a 900 degree grill, the first thing that meat's going to do is it's just going to seize up. That seizure is going to break down those muscle fibers. Those muscle fibers carry cells. Cells carry water. So you've now taken the, the outer 16th or 8th of an inch of that steak and purged all the moisture out of it. You've also created an off flavor. If you've ever noticed when you've seared in the juices, You'll see when you cut that steak, there's a gray line all the way around it. You guys know what I mean? Guess what that gray line is? All the molecular structure you destroyed when you seared in the juices. Please say, chat. That's how I've done steaks my whole life. Change. Help me. Please. Reverse sear. It's exactly what we just did here. 180 or 225 degrees, depending on how much time you have, those muscle fibers slowly loosen up. And then we sear them on the back end so we still get that mylar effect. Get those grill marks, get that little bit of char, that caramelization of the proteins that we're looking for, and it's going to be much bigger flavor. It, it, it's a much velvetier taste than that sear on both sides. Any other? I would like to know, doesn't it give more control of the temp using reverse sear? Yes, Fred. Very good point. It does, Fred. Fred said he gets more, you get more control of the temperatures using reverse sear. That's just like in barbecue when we talk about cooking low or slow or hot and fast. When you cook low and slow in barbecue, you've got a really big window for pulling product off at the right time. When you cook hot and fast in barbecue, you've got a very narrow window of it getting overcooked. Same way with reverse sear. You're slowly bringing that steak up so you can be taking your thermometer, checking on it four, five, six times. Great point, Fred. So, Trey is asking, when do you add compound butter? If I'm going to do compound butter, it'd be right there at the end. When I pulled it off, I put a dollop of compound butter on top and then hit it with that foil, and that butter's just going to melt over that steak. I'm a big fan of um, finishing salts as well. Yep. So if you don't if you do not do the rubs and you don't season them a lot before, you just do salt and pepper. They have a bazillion different kinds of salt. You guys work with Jacobson, Jacobson. yeah. Um, we work with Jacobson as well. And so you have like these beautiful flavors that you hit right at the very end. And that it just sinks right down in it. It just gives it that, that last little... Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, salt done in the right way wakes all flavors up. That's a little tip in the competition barbecue world. Don't be afraid to salt. No, every turn-in box I turn in, once I've built it, I hit it with just a dusting of salt. And it makes such a difference when you, t when you taste a bite of food without that finishing salt and with that finishing salt. Tammy is, wants to know where she can find a Traeger dealer. Tammy, do you want to find a Traeger dealer? Let me tell you where to go. TraegerGrills.com slash dealers. Dealers. That's where you're going to find your dealers at. Go in there, city or state, zip code. It's going to show you your dealers. It's going to show you what they do. It's going to show you if they're an authorized dealer, what they sell. Um, it's a great little tool right there. So go over to traegergirls.com slash dealers. Don't get much prettier than that. Yeah. And the deals that are there at the dealers, once again, let's talk about it. Pro, Pro, Pro 34 and Pro 22 are going to be $100 off. Your Tailgater 20 and your Bronson 20 are going to be $50 off. So you can go in there, you can save that money, or take that money by dad's and great accessories. My, my pick for Father's Day to go along with that Pro Series deal is a three-pack tool set here. I love the tool kit. It's great. Big tail, no fork. It's pretty awesome. Any other questions? I think that's about it. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in with us today. Thanks to Steve, the great staff here at Barbecue Pit Stop, Layton, Utah. Come look them up. Beautiful store. They've been great. And thanks to all you for watching. Don't forget, hit those participating dealers today through June 18th. TraerGirls.com slash dealers. $100 off Pro Series. $50 off Tailgater and Bronson 20s. Thank you guys so much. Take care.